The Prentice also Heating and Air Coaches Corner, fueled by Donut Country and McDonald's Murfreesboro on FM 101.9 and AM 1450 Murfreesboro, FM 100.5 Smyrna, and streaming at WGNSSports.com. We're back here on the Coaches Show, brought to you by Prentice Alsop Heating and Air, family owned and operated since 1977. Get the best service with Prentice Alsop Heating and Air online at PrenticeAlsop.com. This time of the year, you're probably using that heat for the first time. And um, make sure you've got good heat for the wintertime, for sure. As um, we wrap up October, look toward November. It's playoff football time, and the team that punched their ticket into the playoffs last night, the Eagle Bowl Eagles, Coach Floyd Walker. Good morning, sir. Morning, man. Appreciate you having us on today. Absolutely. Congrats on the uh, the win. Uh, there was a lot of pressure on those games last night for your I mean, it, the whole region. It, it, it was. It was an exciting night in our region. It was a lot of a lot of scenarios that could could take place. You know, depending on whether or not you you won a loss or other people won a loss and uh, it was a lot of exciting stuff that happens uh, as far as, you know, first through through fourth or first through fifth in our region. And um, there was some some good things that happened for certain people, some bad things that happened for certain people. But in, in our case, uh, we we ended up winning and finishing second. So and we get to host a, a home football game for the playoffs for the first time in quite some time. So it's a huge night and a huge accomplishment, uh, accomplishment for our kids. You knew going into that game of all of the scenarios that if you won, you were in. So that kind of took care of a lot of things. Well, yeah, well, and that's all we knew. Okay, we knew if we won, we were in, and that's pretty much was all our thought process. Everybody wants to talk about this, that, and the other thing, but we we tried to we tried to stay focused on the task of hey, look, don't worry about all the ifs and buts. If you win, you're gonna go somewhere, and they'll tell you where you're gonna play, and that's kind of what our mentality was. There was, you sent me the scenarios, and even what TSSAA had was similar, right? But on theirs, and I've never seen this. They had question marks. <laughs> I don't oh, know if yeah. you saw that on yeah. it. So yeah, yeah. it's like it, it went to the fifteenth tiebreaker or whatnot. But there, there was a scenario where the whole region from one to five could finish six and four. But yeah, yeah you know, it was, it was, it was, <laughs> it, it was an interesting year in our region. It yeah, was never really anything clear cut, uh, and it went down to you know the last game of the season. So you can basically say, you know, since TWSAA is taking over doing all of the region scheduling, they may have gotten it right for our region as far as uh, meaningful games being played on the last week of the year. Well, um, you had the win the week before over Richland. Right. Richland winds up with the one seed despite you winning that game. I guess there was a tie or whatnot. I don't know how no, all that was that They only had one loss. Okay. Everybody else had two, so it was, they ended up. That's how it works, yeah. yeah. But um, you know that was that was a nice way to propel yourself into a really good situation here coming up with week ten or week eleven and and knowing what you had to play for. Right, it was one of those deals. Pretty much, it's been one of those deals region wise that that we dug ourselves in a hole early on with losses to um, Moore County and Wayne County, and we we knew uh, coaching wise that we we couldn't stump our toe in any other re- remaining region games and. And we kind of just locked in on trying to make sure that we were we were able to to line up and execute just the base stuff for us, and and our kids just did a super job, especially on the defensive side of things. Coach, um, I'll talk about that in a minute. I was I'm going to look at playoffs and 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 that, but uh, let's let's talk about last night's win, thirty five to six over uh, Cornersville, and. Uh, you got the first half uh, lead. You led fourteen nothing at half. Uh, from what I understand, it was it was, you know, maybe a, an ugly lead, but a lead. It was an ugly <laughs> lead, and I, 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 I tip you had to Cornsville. Okay, I thought you know their kids coming in. I think they were two and sevens or something like that. It was senior night. Uh, I thought that that Coach Elliott had that their team extremely well prepared, extremely well motivated. Um, it was not like a two and seven team that just came out and laid down, and just to get the season over with. I thought they really came out and got after us. Uh, they had some extremely big people that we had a difficult time offensively, you know, managing uh, up front. But I, I, I tip my my hat to our kids. I thought our kids battled. I thought they competed at a high level uh, for four quarters. I thought that they never got rattled, no matter what what transpired throughout the game, whether it was a big play or a turnover, whatever it may be. But I, I thought they, they maintained the course for the, for the night. 
you know, you had to um, not only go on the road last week to Richland, but Cornersville and, you know, kind of uh, road warriors at the end of the season. That can be difficult. You know, you, you put all those those things against you. You had to have some resiliency that maybe if you had to play this schedule in early August, it may not have been the same. Yeah, man, be, the thing about us, we've been, we've been solid because of this senior class. We've got 14 seniors that have been around this program and played in a lot of ball games, and they do a super job of making sure that everybody stays on track and on task. And it, and that's that's the big thing that I can say about this football team, the leadership from the senior guys for as Nolan Lane and Marshall Spann and Caleb Snitzer and Noah Lilly and the on and on and on. These kids do a super job of just, of just staying the even keel. Uh, but when the lights come on, the ability and the opportunity to play for one another and with one another it, it's 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 unique, it's rare, and I think that's the big thing that's carried us so far this year. You mentioned Caleb, uh, 17 carries, uh, almost 90 yards, a touchdown, interception return for a touchdown. So, um, I mean, that that's a big night when you can score on both sides of the ball. He's had a big night every night this season. And, uh, again, I, I know I've, I've probably talked about it before, but when you talk about the way that a young man has played and carried himself this this season – uh, I'm extremely happy and when his name comes up in conversation about, you know, our football team and how he's played because everything that he's done this season, he's he's worked his tail off and he's he's earned it. I mean, he is, he's put the work in and now, uh, all of his hard work is coming to the forefront. Well, I, I mean, after last season – he kind of knew that he was going to have to be one of your leaders. And sometimes that's a, a pressure that kids crumble under, but not this young man. No, no, because he's got a lot of support. He's got a lot of encouragement coming from his teammates. When you when you go through the cafeteria and you see all of them sitting at the table, having the time of their life, just eating lunch and just just being able to spend time with one another, that's, that's what it's really about. And these are going to be some relationships that's going to end up lasting a lifetime. And some of these people are going to end up being either – you know the the best man at at some of these other kids' wedding, or they're going to be in the wedding. So it's it's going to be fun to watch to see where life takes these this group of people. Yeah, and they don't know it, but boy, does it happen quick. Oh. I mean, it's it. You know, what's when from graduation to twenty five? There's a lot of life that happens. And there's a lot of life that happens, and trust me, from twenty five to fifty nine, oh. it flies by. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm I'm seeing that more and more every day. So uh, Marshall Spann also had a couple of block punts. Yeah. And uh, special teams, when, when you can do things like block punts on special teams, I think that, that ignites the whole team. It does. I mean, we had we had two block punts on special teams. I thought uh, Spencer Robbins did a tremendous job on one kickoff return, brought it back, put us on uh, past the 50-yard line on like the plus 40, plus 35, gave us great field position. Special teams was huge last night for us. And, and, I, and and our kids do a super job of, of, of participating in the special team. Midway through the third quarter, um, you know, with about five minutes to go in the game, you're up 21 nothing at that point. And then Cornersville finds a little life there and scores, and uh, it's back to kind of a two-score lead. But you got things rolling again, scored another yeah, couple of times. I mean, I mean, Cornersville hit us on a big run. I mean, kid makes a good run. Starts one way, cuts back. We lose contain on the backside of things. He goes down the sideline, gives them an opportunity, and they, they take it in a couple of plays later. But I thought our kids, like I said earlier, just did a great job of just being resilient. They didn't panic. They didn't get frustrated. They just came out, took the ball back, went down the, down the field, put more points on the board. And uh, we were just able to get out of Cornerville with the win, which we're, we're thankful for. Well, the uh, regular season finish is 7-3 and three for your Eagles. And just to kind of do a brief overview of the season, Coach, your three losses were 8 points, 7 points, 7 points. You don't have to remind me. <laughs> you, 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 you don't have to remind me. I mean, you know, just there – was not all, seemed to me to be a lot of parity within your region and, and maybe with even in your division or at least the teams that you played. I mean, it was really tight. There, there was a lot of parity, and it was a lot of things that, you know, that you – it's kind of like Christmas, you know, if ifs and buts were candy and us, we'd all have a right. great Christmas and all that stuff. But there's a lot of things that you, you wish you could go back in those games and redo, and, and but unfortunately you can't. But it, it was a lot of growth 
that took place on our football team from from those losses. And but again, most of the time when you lose a game like that, you may be disappointed, you may be discouraged, and you. But this group never never got discouraged, never got disappointed. Uh, just continue to just continue to believe in one another and put the work in day in and day out. And and we're sitting here seven three with a you know a number two seed coming out of our region and an opportunity to play at home. You know they're just looking over the whole one A um, bracket. They're they're not that many teams that don't have a loss. There are a lot of you know, seven and three, right. six and four, five and five teams, and uh, again, I think that maybe even in in entire one A football this year kind of shows a little bit of of parity. It shows parity, and it shows that there's some there's some really good football teams and football programs across this state. Uh, I've been in this state for a long period of time. I've seen a lot of football in this state from you know from the '80s until now, and the amount of coaching that is now taking place the amount of training and development that's now taking place uh, in this state is is starting to allow for a lot of parity and and is i'm excited for the future of football in the state of tennessee and i just hope that it continues to keep growing and that kids continue to keep playing well um playoffs uh, how many years have you been at eagleville now i have no idea <laughs> Long time. Uh, uh, total, I've been in Eagle 15. I think this is the 15th year at Eagle. So. I, that's what I thought. This is a very interesting stat to me, I think. Um, Eagle Bowl has been in the playoffs 14 of the last 15 years. No, well, I know the one year that they weren't. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would say that, too. <laughs> what year was that? Uh, yeah, I know yeah. who that was. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, but, I mean, that's that's a pretty amazing statistic to know. I mean, when you have a program that's parentally there, right. you know that that means you've had some really good athletes come through. Yeah, that's what you got to. That's what you got to think about. You got to go back and think about all the kids that have played there. Uh, you got to think about um, all the people that have that have supported them, whether it's in the community, whether it's the parent, whether it's the student body. There's been a lot of a lot of great people that's been part of this program. It's just not coaches. It's just not players. But there's a lot of great people out there that that do things behind the scene for this football program and have done things over the, over the years. And, and I'll, I'll say one group of people, I don't know whether it's been 11 years or 12 years, but when you talk about a loyal family, you have to talk about Mike and Katrina Lane. They've had four sons go through this program. Uh, they finally got their last one, Nolan, who's a senior this year, and it's going to be one of those deals to where, you know, you're going to look up and there's not going to be a lane either A, playing or working in the concession stand um, that's been on the field or in, involved in this program for the last 11 years. So you're thankful for those things. You're thankful for the opportunity to to just experience that with them. Yeah. And uh, you're going to be forever grateful that that, that you were able to able to to know them so well if you stay there long enough maybe grandkids you never know (laughs) well i think some of the sons are about to get married and you know all this stuff so but i don't know if i'm gonna make it to be there okay Uh, that would be another 15 plus i don't know if i got it in me i don't know if i got it in me well i hope you got it in you next week and i think you do to take on the fighting irish of houston county they come in with a seven and three record um you know a whole lot about Houston County? Not much. I mean, I probably watched maybe five minutes of them. Uh, but I know that Coach Meadows, we used to play them uh, in the regular season. We had a two-game deal with them. We played them before in the playoffs. Uh, so we, we we played them several times. I know that they're going to be extremely competitive, extremely well-coached, and extremely a tough group of kids. So, uh, it'll be a challenge for us, but I'm excited about the opportunity to just have that challenge take place at home. Well, yes, you're not having to make the long bus ride and all the things sure. that go along with it, and uh, much rather have the concession stand. Uh, you've got other things to worry about, but at least it's not a bus ride. Correct. Correct. <laughs> not a bus ride, and I have to worry about free game meals on the road. That's right. That's right. Well, Coach, uh, congrats on the 7-3 uh, and three finish, and Good luck in the playoffs. It looks like it's wide open race. It is, man, and we appreciate everything that you do for high school sports in Eagle. I appreciate that, Coach. That is Floyd Walker joining us on the Coach's Show, brought to you by Craig's Tax Service, specializing in personal and business tax preparation, financials, and bookkeeping services. Find out more online at craigstaxservice.com. 
Choosing the right insurance can be overwhelming.